Hey everyone, Charting Man Dan of the Chart Guys checking in on the markets. We had a choppy day out there. Powell spoke again at 10 a.m., much less of a reaction, not surprising. Had a nice trade on NVDA, we'll do a trade review of that. And bigger picture, bulls have to prove that the daily higher lows are set tomorrow by breaking the highs of today. So we know the S&P 500 has pulled back a good bit more than the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has been doing everything that it can to try and hold up for the bulls And the financial sector and the healthcare sector remain very weak, but it is a bullish reversal candle trying to form here. And if we break the high of today, tomorrow, the daily higher low is set. From there, it can go one of three ways. Increasing bull volume for the higher high. I don't think we can get that higher high straight away without that increasing bull volume. Fail to break the high and drop back down to the low or equilibrium and tighten up into, you know, next Tuesday, perhaps. So we will see, but the burden is still on the bulls to prove to us that they have control. We can see the S&P 500 futures chart is still an hourly downtrend right now, and it did get a bit choppy. Megaphone galore. I was finding megaphones on all kinds of time frames today. And this is one on the S&P 500 to be watching, where if we reject from this overnight, we will still be within this megaphone NASDAQ, again, the daily chart looks so much better. If, if the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ both looked like this, I would be bullish for the weekly high or low and for the daily trend change attempt. So NASDAQ bull, same thing. We got to break the high of today, tomorrow. But this is a much more developed hourly trend change attempt. And it will confirm if we break the high of today, tomorrow. You can see QQQ has that hourly trend change attempt. So... retracement, maybe a little bit more, but the possibility is there for the daily trend change to confirm back to the bulls, but the burden of proof is on the bulls, and they would be much more comfortable if they had some help from some of these other major sectors, just as far as, you know, not being the only one that's trying to hold on to some green. Dollar, bull break on the daily, four-hour consolidation, no red flags, Four-hour higher low trying to be set. EMA 12 is still support. If the bulls confirm the four-hour uptrend, that will be strong for higher highs. If we're going to set daily higher lows in the broader market with any kind of follow-through, broader market bulls want to see a failure to break 105.88 and then a loss of the four-hour EMA 12 support to be shaping up daily consolidation in the dollar. And that would be a daily bull break with a lack of follow-through which would have us start to scout a rising wedge. Natural gas, daily higher low attempt as well. We now have a double top and a double bottom. So on the hourly overnight, we double topped at 2698. And then today we double bottomed. We had an hourly bear flag confirm, but we held the low of consolidation. And so now we're just chopping around, tightening up within this range. So essentially the low, high of the bounce, higher low, and watching for a potential for our equilibrium into tomorrow. Keeping in mind, we have the inventory report tomorrow. So watching for natural gas to set this daily high or low, and then the bulls must confirm the daily trend change. So aggressive bulls, definitely watching into the next couple of days. NVDA, so let's do a trade review. Strong day, strong close up at the highs. So at 1.30, I've been trading NVDA bearish the last couple of days because there's been a very clear resistance zone. The bulls have struggled between 238 and 242. We don't stay in that range very long before we pull back. We closed at the low of the day the last two days in a row. So I've been looking bearish, but I saw a setup that I liked into the end of the day. And I had, you know, if you asked me in the morning, are you gonna trade NVDA bullish today? I would have said no, but I got new information in the middle of the day, which stood out to me. So NVDA is a potential hourly cup and handle with yesterday's levels as well. But QQQ would need to set an hourly higher low and shift back to the bulls for the afternoon. That's at 132. At that point in time, QQQ had zero indication of finding a bottom. At 132, we were trading right here. So we're at the low of consolidation. The bears have control of the short-term time frames, but I can recognize a setup. If the NASDAQ bulls are going to set an hourly higher low compared to the low of the day, they need to show up now. And if they don't, then we're not going anywhere. But there's a setup there where an hourly higher low may form on the NASDAQ. So that is a key aspect of this trade setup that had me interested in making a long entry. It wasn't just NVDA 
and its hourly cup and handle, which was this. So I recognized NVDA hourly bull flag. I talked about this trade a good bit in my crypto live stream because I had just entered right before going live for crypto. So if you want more in depth as it was happening and not in hindsight, check out the crypto live stream. But relative strength on the hourly and the NASDAQ again was you know down here giving back half the day's move at that point. So clear relative strength. It's an hourly bull flag shaping up. And again, it was a resistance rejection. I know there's a ton of bears up in this zone. And so if we can power through it, there's gonna be some short covering pressure to help propel it higher. And so what do I do with that information? So I know what I'm looking for. Hourly cup and handle. Lost my stuff. So all right, message. And then in that thread, I made three attempts to go long. And I was trying to go long with the larger than normal position size. So I was exiting partial very quickly. And so it was a nice five minute tightening range here. And we did get a bear break with no follow through. I was trying to enter right here. This is when I started trying to enter. My first entry attempt was on a two minute time frame, And I was essentially saying, if this is a two minute high or low and we break bull, it's an hourly bull flag. And so I entered on this two minute consolidation. I sold partial, we double topped at resistance. It stopped me out. All right, break even, I'll try again. If that's a half day loser or a day loser, I'm probably not gonna keep trying. Break even, I'll try again. Then I tried down here. I said, all right, well, I'm going to the five minute because we are still holding five minute support. And that at that point was 237.75. So I made an attempt here where I made an entry. Again, sell a little bit. Stop at that point was 237.99. And that was break even again. Why didn't I just put my stop under that level? Because again, I was trying to be, I was knew I was about to live stream crypto. I'm going to be distracted. And I was just trying to get, I, I didn't want to take a red trade at this point in the day. I had a, you know, a, a flat day pretty much at that point. And I didn't want this to be the reason that I had a red day. So I was just being picky and I did stop out at that bottom, but I recognized that it was at that bottom and I jumped right back in again, break even. So I'll keep trying as long as I keep going break even. And at that point, the last attempt that I made, and it had to be the last attempt because I was no longer gonna be paying attention. So in at 238.05, so again, that's me recognizing I just got stopped out. We're still holding five minutes support. That might be the low of the move there. And again, it was the NASDAQ was still not doing anything for the bulls. And so I enter on this next candle right after stopping out. So essentially the same position I had, except maybe six pennies, eight pennies worse average. And then look how quickly I'm selling here, because again, it's a, it's a large position size for me, especially with NVDA volatility. So I'm out a quarter at 238.16, and I'm out another quarter at 238.36. So that is essentially a 20 cent gain on half of my position. And so now my break even is 238.85. At that point, I said, all right, I'm about to be off the computer or about off the chart. I'm just gonna stick my stop under that 237.75 level. I was risking maybe 15 cents and then it played out where we got the bull move, 15 minute back test of EMA 12 support and then a bull move into the close. We're up after hours. So I was also looking at a four hour rising wedge, which we've been watching the last couple of days. So again, I can be bullish the hourly, but cautious or bearish different time frames, And that's something that I'm trying to drive home in a few people's heads that I've been interacting with recently. It's you should have different biases, biases based on different time frames. Unless all trends are in the, unless all time frames are in the same trend, you can be bullish the hourly, bearish the daily, bullish the weekly based on price action. So I'm not swinging NVDA. I did exit all into the end of the day because of Number one, this uptrending resistance line. Number two, 240, 244, resistance is right there. And I also don't wanna think about it overnight tonight and worry about what the market is doing and check my phone right when I wake up. So just locked it in. But we'll see if NVDA bulls are able to get over that rising resistance because it is easily the lead bull out of the major names that I watch right now. And the key clue, it looked like we were close to rolling over. It looked like some distribution and maybe it will be but NVDA divided by QQQ kept the daily uptrend. I cannot be a confident bear if the ratio chart 
is showing relative strength and a daily uptrend. And so right now, NVDA is as strong as it's been relative to the NASDAQ in almost a year, over a year, and is approaching the all-time high. So have to be, have to lose the daily uptrend. And again, the reason I went Netflix short and then had some confidence is we lost the uptrend. And the reason that Tesla bears have confidence is we confirm the downtrend and we are following through nicely. And so again, I talked about in the video yesterday, Tesla divided by QQQ, where we stand right now is pretty much where NVDA divided by QQQ, or I should say Netflix divided by QQQ is trading like right around here and hoping to accelerate to the downside. So Tesla bears had a good day today. There is a double bottom at 180 on the hourly chart. You can see bulls defended 180, but very weak bounce, relative weakness. We saw we just closed at the low there. And so the bears are positioned really well for any weakness. We can definitely bounce if we see the NASDAQ set this daily high or low, but keep an eye on that correlation chart. And as long as it is showing weakness and hitting lows, that's your confidence giver as a bear. Healthcare. Bear break on the daily, not much follow through, but again, extremely weak. We did bounce a little bit into the end of the day, but overall, not really doing anything. Still an hourly downtrend, still a daily downtrend. Bears in full control. Financial sector is still very weak. So daily and hourly downtrend here. Look at this resistance level from the end of yesterday. 35.23. And look at how we traded this morning. 35.21, 23. Bears are just playing defense and ensuring that that's an hourly bear flag. And then from there, now I'm watching a four hour megaphone where I'm watching that and that. Resistance break with no follow through, support break. Maybe we'll follow through, maybe we won't. If we're green tomorrow in the financial sector, definitely gonna keep an eye on this megaphone. But again, it's still all bears. A lot of weakness the last two days in healthcare and the financial sector and QQQ the last couple of days, again, it's, it's got the weight of its shoulders. The responsibility is on the shoulders of the NASDAQ bulls trying to hold up here. And we did see the initial reaction to Powell yesterday, all major sectors at the lows together. But since then, it's the NASDAQ that's preventing from the uh, runaway bear move. IWM broke support. Technically, that's a weekly little lower high and lower low. We'll see if we get any follow through hourly downtrend. That's another megaphone like pattern resistance break. Here's your uptrending resistance. Very similar to, well, not surprising, it's similar to the financial sector because financial sector are the largest sector holdings in IWM. Biotech sector, bear break to lower lows. Bears keeping full control there. I'm just watching the monthly here. I used to trade the biotech sector all the time. Have not traded it much at all in the last six months. Low, high, higher, low, lower, high. If we hold 74.97, which is still about 8% away, then we can remain within this tightening range for a while. And I will absolutely be interested in day trading LABU and LABD a lot more again once that range breaks. AI scouting a daily higher low. Bulls want to hold 24.03. If we lose that level, there's gap to fill. Daily EMA 12 support in play tomorrow. Hourly RSI just getting oversold. 2460 trying to hold as a double bottom. Bulls would have to break 2555 for that to be a successful hold of support. But just keeping an eye out for the bulls, especially if the NASDAQ bulls confirm the daily higher low is set. We know we're scouting the daily higher low in AI. Coin continues to have really nice volatility. Pattern of bull in the morning and bear in the afternoon has been fairly consistent. Something happened after hours. No, that's not it. So if the first thing I do is I check other names, similar, Riot and MARA. They're down a little bit after hours as well. So something might be up there. Did Bitcoin just dump? Not meaningfully. So the last thing I do whenever I'm just showing you right now, what, what do I do throughout the trading day? Go to Twitter, hop on, search coin, go to latest. 
puts right before the close. SI. SI going bankrupt. So a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you get your news? Obviously having a chat room of a thousand people has a ton of eyes and everybody has a bunch of sources. It's SI. But that's how I do it otherwise. Just informing the chat room. Congrats to the SI bears. All right. So coin has had nice volatility is what I'm trying to say. Big bull move up again two days ago, all bulls in the morning, huge ranges. And seeing that again, Still tight on the daily. This daily range is gonna open up again. Riot, very similar. These ranges are gonna open up when they break clearly bull or clearly bear. What else was I trading for volatility? CCJ bears have keep falling through a bit. Not really trading that much. MSOS. So MSOS bears defended resistance today. We opened right at 709 and the bears knocked the price down. So that is def that's bears defending resistance. And if we're not breaking resistance, then we're just remaining sideways. Have to break the resistance for the trigger for bulls to get interested and for bears to cover positions. So the bears are going to defend 7 to 736 with everything they've got. And today was a successful defense. Gold, trying to hold the low. Bulls have to confirm the four-hour trend change. Bulls not proving a whole lot. And miners, same thing. Trying to hold the low, not a strong day. Hourly trend change needed back to the bulls. And oil following through from our equilibrium rejection, right back in the middle of the range, 7380 key support, patiently waiting for the tight range to open up again. It's so important to recognize tightening ranges, trading less, playing off the, the levels while they give nice ranges. And then once we get to a certain point, you stop trading it, you wait for the ranges to break. There are so many times where I make money trading based on an equilibrium, having zero bias on the direction it's going to break. I have no idea the direction it's gonna break. I know it's tight. I know when it breaks, we will likely see follow through. All right, appreciate you watching. Do good things. See you tomorrow. Lori's back tomorrow, at some point tomorrow. Thank for the, live, the morning pregame. It's okay to have a bias as traders. That's why we use technical analysis to try and determine the most likely scenarios and put ourselves in those most likely scenarios. But it's essential that on every trade, we have a check yourself level. And by that, I mean a clear concrete level where if it breaks, we have to be able to say I am wrong. And we have to then take a step back and reassess our thesis. For me, it's often a clear concrete price level. Sometimes it can be a moving average, but I'll just say a simple statement like as long as XYZ is holding this price level, I am bullish. And then once it breaks, I can check myself and say, okay, I need to take a step back because if I were going to be right, this level wouldn't have broken. And a lot of fundamental traders don't have that clear concrete level. And they find themselves in the mindset of the market is wrong. I'm not wrong. The market's just not pricing in this information correctly, or you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start pricing it in, in another week. And that's when you find yourself holding red positions for multiple months. So ensure that any bias that you have comes with a check yourself level to ensure that you're not being blinded by that bias.